So the thing is with underfloor, you've either got 100 mil, well, even 100 mil stretch, some people, some systems just can't get there. You're meant to heat up the pipe for 100 mil, aren't you? So you yeah, can get the radius. Yeah, I've weeks trying to do big. Like, yeah. I've done like three kilometres of underfloor in a house. Oh, have you? Like, to do 100 mil centres in every room, you'd mm. be there for months. That, <laughs> that's why we don't. You said you want to do it. Mm. <laughs> I don't want well, us to do it, underfloor. Yeah. But I want 100 mil centres because yeah. you're never going to be able to rip up that floor again. Yeah. Uh, and it's only ever more in. So, although it's going to take months, that's going to be in there for years, tens of years, 30 mm-hmm. years, 40 years. Yeah. Um, so, I still think it's worth it. Um, even though you're probably only saving five degree flow temperature, that's, I that's just, a lot in heat cut. In yeah, I was, the, terms. what I was thinking is if you've got a whole house, say you yeah, no, have a yeah. whole house yeah. on there and then you've done every room in 100 centres, yeah. you've got a small bathroom with 100 centres. Yeah. So Small bathrooms actually probably might need yeah, uh, because that high temperature. Well, Normally, it's not that. No, because they still won't keep up with it. With because when you're when you're doing underfloor heating, it's the usable surface yeah, area. Yeah, so yeah. if that's your yeah, bath, bath stuff you've only got this amount of floor area, so you probably want. But there are. It's more likely when you've got internal rooms or something like that that's got you know more internal walls. You've got really low demand. So yeah, we, we want to try and put 100 mil centres everywhere. If we then go and put 100 mil centres there, yeah, in theory, that's going to put uh, in too much energy. But um, the variable we've got to play with, uh, and you still can size up to 150, so this is when we reach the extremes that you want to go up to 150. The variable we have is, uh, you can run underfloor heating at DT2 or 3, up to DT12. Mm. And also, um, the other variable we have is uh, the DT at winter versus the shoulder months. So. The idea that you have um, a, a narrower DT for underfloor is because you don't want this part of the room being hotter than this part of the room. Well, f- first of all... I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah, no, first of all, you go like this. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't do anything like that. You it. snail pattern it. But that's much easier to do a snail pattern at 100mm centres than it is to do a serpentine pattern at 100mm centres. Yeah, until you get into the middle. Yeah, yeah then you can... So that, that's only one difficult spot rather than lots of difficult spots. So, yeah. But, but even if that does have a DT of, let's say that has a DT of 15, you're not really going to notice, but let's just say, let's say we did go serpentine. Uh, if this gets a DT 15, your flow rate generally through underfloor um, uh, is generally fixed. So if that's DT 15 at minus three, when you're at minus, uh, when you're at plus eight or something, it's half the load, your DT would be 7.5. And it's much more likely to be eight degrees outside than it is minus three. So then it would be even. You'd only get an extreme, and you'd have to have very sensitive toes to notice the floor temperature, and be wearing no shoes to notice yeah. it. So that's the first thing. But in that case, anyway, you'd still use the snail pattern. But your point is that if we go 100 mil centers everywhere, so ignoring that, go 100 mil centers everywhere, and this room is going to get too hot. Uh, yes, but so what we play is with DT. So our DT can vary from two, two or three. You'll often see two or three in an underfloor heat manifold, uh, up to probably wouldn't go more than 15. And let's say our flow temperature at minus three is um, 40 degrees. So we've got 40 degrees going in here, and 40 degrees going in here. If we wind this DT down to to two, we've got 38 degree return. We've got a, 39 degree mean temperature. So the output is going to be um, whatever that equates to with that type of floor and covering, etc. It's got a DT of 15, the return is 25. Our mean temperature is 30, is it 32.5? Yeah. So that's obviously going to have a greatly reduced output over this one. Having said that, when you fit on the floor, they all come with on off stats anyway. So let's say we had them at the same DT. Yeah. We could just fire this one on and off. You would still got the same flow temperatures at the heat pump. Yeah. So the, the heat pump's exactly the same efficiency. Yeah. It's so just, say you it's had just gonna have to ramp up and down a bit. So you that ran, can fire on and off. Say you ran that perfectly on an open system, you yeah. open loop on a DT. And we didn't have stats. Pump. And then you would just add the stats to temperature limit every single room then. Yeah, you, you, you temperature limit with the stats. But so yeah, let's say, imagine they had the same DT. You could cycle this on and off. I don't like cycling, so we play with the DTs, we get an even finer tuner. That might turn off twice in a day, even if it's oversized. Yeah. In an extreme situation, we might just go, okay, let's just put 200 mil centers in there. But I think 
that would be an extreme situation. You wouldn't even bother putting... Mind you, that room of choice could change in the future. Oh, it not. might become a heated room in the future, so I'd still put 100 mil in. Then you've got the choice of what temperature you want that room. It might be a mid play oven or something. Because yeah, your heat loss is going to be the biggest room. But also, this heat loss does lose into these rooms as well. So as it tries to heat, you know, you, you do lose it. So but your largest heat loss is going to be the biggest room. Uh, in, in kilowatts, yes. Yeah. Not the flow temperature in kilowatts is not the same. So when your heat loss is in the biggest room, yep. so that'll be your biggest one to, if you did that one at 100 cent. Yeah, this one's gonna get like like 99% of the flow, because A, most of the kilowatts, let's say this is 10 kilowatts, and this one's one kilowatt. So if this has 10 kilowatts and that has one, and they have the same DT, this will have literally 10 times more flow. If this is also gonna have DT2, and that's got DT15, um, this will have, again, another uh, two, four, six. I think 80 times more flow. Yeah, it'll be a lot more flow. That will yeah. have 80 liters per for every liter. That will have eight, what, 80 liters for every liter that will circulate. Yeah. That's all it will be. You just because it's got low load, you just send less energy there by giving it a low flow rate. Yeah. And that's then, and then off that, you get the low DT. To you if, if the load, if the room's smaller, then you're going to have to widen the DT. Because your flow rate, your flow temperature is the same, so you vary your return temperature to move your mean water temperature to change the output. So what you would, in an ideal situation, leave it all open, uh, open loop. You go into each room, you'd measure the room temperature, and then you'd fine tune the room temperatures by adjusting the DT on each loop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just more worried if you widen the DT, then you not increase that. that. As you widen the DT, I mean, the, the other ironic thing is the DT's widened here, so it's got, got, yeah, it's got lower flow. So when you get lower flow here, you're forcing more flow into this 80 litre one anyway, so it all helps each other get into yeah, balance. Yeah. And then what you'll find is you might even push the flow temperature uh, required down because you're directing it to where it needs to be. As you're adding more flow over here, your mean water temperature comes up. Yeah, you're, you're, and if your mean water temperature comes up, you might say, right, heat pump, come down, so you get even more cop out of it. That biggest room will dictate your, your, yeah, but it, that will dictate your flow temperature, but only relative to its DT, and its DT is relative to the smallest DT you need. So actually, this kind of indirectly also dictates your flow temperature, because as, as we've needed a DT at two on this to make it work, it's an exaggeration, uh, we didn't ever design this for a DT of two, we designed it for a DT of 10, they typically designed for, uh, even though we tried to design for a DT of five. Yeah. But we've, designed, we've done a DT of two giving full 39 rather than 37, therefore the heat pump will come down two or three degrees and we'll literally get more cotton. Once that mixes it, so that'll, ha that'll, that'll average out. That Shouldn't mix two. anywhere though. Oh, do you mean on the returns? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the returns, well, then, well you say that, the returns will mainly be this, because you're mixing 80 to one litre, so it'll be a mixture of 25 uh, and yeah, 38, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it will mainly be 38. Yeah, so you'll have a lot it'll of... It'll be 37 point... You'll have a lot of small rooms, like, in theory, you want five, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a five degree DT pack at your heat pump. This is an, in, this is an internal, um, yeah, exactly, the, the DT of five, which should still be there, so yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the average eventually, average it out. it'll pull, and the upstairs probably needs less heat, because it's heated, you know, there's a heat source below, Found so eventually, balance. yeah, you will lower the flow rate there, and yeah, you know, it should come down to it. But um, you say a DT of five for heat pumps, I don't think there's like an error without it being DT three, it's just not really possible, because it's, that's too much flow to yeah, get yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. We are so excited to be facilitating exclusive training for the next generation of heating masters. The Heat Geek courses are designed to take you from heating installer to heating god with the ability to design hydronic systems from scratch, massively increasing your value as a heating engineer and earn yourself a recognised certification. Let us teach you the skills you need to charge more for your services and future-proof your career.